Good evening, every. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the GSMC Hockey Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Garrison McDaniel, and we have a great show for you guys today as this is our Friday show. So we'll be wrapping up uh, the games from this weekend and then looking on to the weekend. Our first game that we're going to be talking about in the first segment, of course, is that Thursday game between the Oilers, or sorry, not, yes, between the Oilers and the Stars. That was the Thursday, that was the Wednesday game. Thursday game will be the Rangers and Panthers. That's our second segment today. I... I know the days. It's all blending together right now with these playoffs. All these games have been so great. Um, The third segment, we'll be talking about the hockey calendar. And if there is a problem, as they announced today, the Stanley Cup final uh, schedule. And now we're looking at it. And these days are moving very closely together, especially when you look at the offseason dates as well. So we'll talk about all of that in the third segment. Our fourth segment today, we'll be talking about the AHL and the Calder Cup semifinals that just got underway last night. Uh, There are four great teams in there that I want to talk about. And then our fifth and final segment will be me previewing the three games ahead of the weekend and my predictions for uh, those three games. But before we get into all that, as always, if you would like to uh, if you would like to help support the show even more than you guys already do. If you could uh, use the gsmcpodcast.net tips and and donations link, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. You guys could put a question there and put the question at the top of your list. Make sure that I read it and and it it builds a greater uh, community uh, bonding for us and you guys. So with that all being said, and as I struggle to talk here, uh, we're going to get right into our first segment, talking about the Oilers and the Stars, as the Oilers were able to dominate the Stars uh, after a pretty disappointing first period by the, or pretty disappointing first half to the first period by the Edmonton Oilers. They got off to a slow start in this one. The Dallas Stars go up 2 to nothing very early in this one, and then Oilers 5 unanswered goals fire back in this one and they are able to win uh this one making it a 2-2 series uh tie going to this game five that is currently ongoing tonight as always i keep you guys up to date with the scores that are going on based on the time of the live stream that we do this podcast um these games are happening as i do it and right now we see the Oilers ahead of the Stars, one nothing in that game. Uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins got a power play goal for the Edmonton Oilers. Funnily enough, that was my biggest, uh, you know, biggest factor for the Oilers going into this game and going into the rest of the series. They need to start producing on the power play, which they just haven't. <clears throat> They had not scored a power play goal up until the first goal of this game, and I, you know, that was a big red flag for me because they had such a great power play. Their power play it was, and we didn't stop talking about it. It was around forty-five percent for the first two series of this playoffs, and now they, uh, you know, they slowed down in this series. Didn't get a single goal on uh, uh, north of ten attempts here uh, against the Dallas Stars, but a power play goal in Game Five is. A great way to start that one and is very promising. It's Ryan Nugent Hopkins with the goal in that one. But going back to Thursday in this game four between the Dallas Stars and the Edmonton Oilers, uh, a little bit of the game breakdown. Wyatt Johnson opened the scoring with an absolute snipe over Stuart Skinner. Stuart Skinner had a rough start to this game, um, as has been, you know, uh, his story of this playoff so far. It has been very... It has been very disappointing for Stuart Skinner, but uh, we'll see if he can kind of bounce back. Hopefully, Stuart Skinner is able to uh, help out the Edmonton Oilers more than he hurts the Edmonton Oilers, as, I mean, he has been the problem for this team this entire uh, postseason. Uh, We talk about it so often. He is one of the worst goaltenders in the um, expansion era in a postseason, Um, and it just continues uh, and it looked like it was going to continue in a horrible way as he let in the first uh, he let in two of his first six shots faced um at, at a point in this game had a six six seven save percentage and that is horrible uh so was able to bounce back in this one that's really great to see but not before the stars doubled their lead with an Issa Lindell shot this wasn't Stuart Skinner's fault it was a shot from Issa Lindell that's going to go five feet wide but it hits Darnell Nurse's uh, rear end and uh, ricochets into the back of the net that's just a such an unfortunate goal for Stuart Skinner there's nothing he can do there he's giving that goal up 10 out of 10 times so uh 
you know, you can't predict that happening. You can't predict a ricochet off of your own defenseman's rear end. But nonetheless, it happens. It's fine. <laughs> Um, he, he bounces back from that though. Uh, from that point on, he doesn't let up another goal in this game. So very impressive what Stuart Skinner was able to do here, able to turn it around, put those two early goals behind him, and plays <clears throat> and plays very good hockey uh, down the stretch in this game. The Oilers gave the Stars a taste of their own medicine in this one, as it was in Game Three that the Edmonton Oilers go up two nothing, and were able, and the Dallas Stars were able to fight back with three goals unanswered in the second period. This one, the Oilers do it a little bit earlier. It's the first period the Oilers were able to make the comeback in down two nothing. Then it goes uh, Ryan McLeod with a goal for the Edmonton Oilers that opened it up off of a rebound. Um, Ryan McLeod got the rebound off of a Corey Perry and Darnell Nurse uh, assist. So it's it's Corey Perry's first assist of the postseason. It's very impressive, or not very impressive. That is very important. Seeing that production from your fourth line is going to be important for this Edmonton Oilers team. And Darnell Nurse's third assist of this postseason. Not an offensive defenseman by any means, but um, you're looking for him to do a lot more than three assists. Uh, it's been disappointing, especially playing on the line with Evan Bouchard, who has been so great offensively. Speaking of sorry, <laughs> speaking of Evan Bouchard, uh, he gets a goal here with a very very impressive uh, McDavid assist. Uh, I would be shocked if he didn't mean to do this. It was Connor McDavid coming down the wing. Evan Bouchard's on the far side. Car McDavid sees that he cannot make a pass to Evan Bouchard, so what he does was he takes a shot low, and you could tell he takes a shot low on purpose, and um, it goes off of um, Jake Andrews' pad right to uh, Evan Bouchard, and Evan Bouchard tucks it away uh, nicely from the far side there. Very, very impressive by Connor McDavid. You could really tell he does it. Uh, the the reason I say you could tell that he does it because he shoots at the low pad. Usually, if Connor McDavid is coming down the wing and is going for a goal, he's going to shoot in the upper half of the net. He's going to elevate the puck at least a little bit. He's clearly going for that low pad on Jake Ottinger to get the puck to slide across, or maybe a five uh, five hole goal. Either one would have been good for the Edmonton Oilers, and this one definitely the Evan Bouchard goal was a nice. Um, it was a welcome, uh, uh, you know, part of this game. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers go into the second intermission now tied instead of down to nothing. It's such an impressive turnaround that they were able to do. Very, very, it, 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 it says a lot to their mental fortitude. It is huge for them to be able to do that. We were talking about how that Dallas Stars comeback could have been very death like uh, it could have been just a death uh, wish for the Edmonton Oilers. Um, you you go up to nothing, home ice on game three, then give up three unanswered, fight back, and then go and give up the fourth, their fourth and fifth goal like that in the third period. I mean, you had that game and you had the comeback, and you were able to you know you're able to put a good a valiant effort into that one, and they were just not able to get that uh, win. So. Very unfortunate for the Edmonton Oilers in that game three, going down two to one. But in this one, they show a lot here, especially going down to nothing. You you have that bad comeback uh, in the first game of this set of this home set, and then you give give up two early goals in the second game. That could get very scary for you, especially going down three one, going back to uh, Dallas. But they're able to <clears throat> they're able to fight back here, and it, it, it's in large part from a Matthias Janmark uh, shorthanded goal uh, from Connor Brown. They combine for a cross crease breakaway shorthanded goal, and then one minute later, it's Leon Dreisaitl who finally gets back on the score sheet. He scored the opening goal in this series, hasn't been seen on the score sheet since. And he's back in a big way. Gets assisted by Zach Kyman and Connor McDavid. Connor McDavid has been lights out in the past few games. And he is the first player I would love to highlight in this one. Three assists in this game. Five shots on goal for three points. He was all over the ice. This guy doesn't need a score to make a difference for his team. It's very reminiscent of, and this is a little bit of helmet scouting, uh, very reminiscent of what we saw Wayne Gretzky do with his teams. Yari Curry and um, Mark Messier were beneficiaries of how fantastic Wayne Gretzky was just being able to assist on so many goals, especially in the playoffs. 
But for Connor McDavid now, um, he's doing the kind of same things that we saw Wayne Gretzky do uh, when he was on his tear. So very, very impressive from Connor McDavid. Three assists in this game. He already has an assist in this game five. I mean, what more can you say about him? He now is the points leader in the playoffs. We were talking about how fantastic of a playoffs uh, Leon Dreisaitl was having. Now Connor McDavid is the one leading the way for the Edmonton Oilers and is the best player on planet Earth for a reason. It's really not a dispute anymore. Uh, there's been times in the in recent memory where you could talk about a Nathan McKinnon, you could talk about maybe a Nikita Kucherov, but it absolutely is Connor McDavid, and this playoff run is showing that. So the Edmonton Oilers have a 4-2 to two lead uh, going into the third period, and then they were able to shut it down, large part from this guy. He finally gets on this uh, on this sheet on you know my top two players in the game, and it's very impressive. <clears throat> Stuart Skinner has not had a good postseason. He's actually had an abysmal postseason. Uh, it costed the Edmonton Oilers on plenty of occasions. You have the you have right now the top four leading point getters in the playoffs. You should be by far and away winning these games. Uh, but they're not doing so because of this man. Uh, so to get a performance like this out of him where, you know, you're kind of winning because of him and not in spite of him is very, very important for the Edmonton Oilers. 20 saves on 22 shots against an above 900 save percentage in the playoffs is always going to be welcomed, um, always going to be needed, really. We're talking about a 27 saves on 30 shots against is what you really want to see. That's your 90 percent save percentage he does a little bit better here so impressive work by Stuart Skinner he puts in a good shift on this game and really helps the Edmonton Oilers now we got game five that is currently ongoing uh the game five as the Edmonton Oilers take a two to nothing lead it's another power play goal for the Edmonton Oilers when it rains it pours two nothing Edmonton now against the Dallas Stars in Dallas that is a huge goal for them to get uh, second power play goal in this game that came one minute and six seconds into the period um that's 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 really rough to see for the dallas stars two nothing that's been the that's been the kind of um uh a tale of this the last few games here so let's see if the dallas stars can make another two goal uh comeback here in the second period so Power play goal by the Edmonton Oilers, as I keep an eye on that game. Now in their game five, up two to nothing. That's huge for them. Uh, as I said, uh, or as I talked about in my shorts that I made uh, a little bit earlier, the the team that wins a game five goes on to win the series 80% of the time in a two to two series going into the game five. So we're going to be talking about that when it comes to the Rangers and Panthers in our second segment. But right now, the Edmonton and they score again, three to nothing now. Philip Broberg scores for the Edmonton Oilers. It is three nothing. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go to our second break uh, before another goal, or we're gonna go to our first break before another goal breaks out in this game. Uh, so that'll wrap it up for the Edmonton Oilers game four is what we were talking about. Game five is currently ongoing as I keep you guys updated to that. When I come back, we'll be talking about the Rangers Panthers game five. 